tyre's compound can't be seen, but can make a huge difference to the tyre's performance. To show exactly how big a difference compounding can make, we're testing the ice performance of three different types of winter tyres. The first two tyres are the Central European Winter Nokian Snowproof and the Nordic Winter Hakapalita R3. While these tyres look very similar, the Hakapalita R3 is designed for a far more extreme winter where packed snow and ice are commonplace. The third tyre on test is the studded Nokian Hakapalita 9. Will changing the compound of the rubber make more of a difference than putting metal studs into the tyre when driving on a frozen lake? That's what we're here to find out. I'm starting off on the European winter tyre, which is really impressive. Given just how slippery this polished ice surface is, I'm actually having some usable grip and managing to get around the lap okay. Making a few errors, maybe brushed a few snowbanks, but it's okay. I'm averaging about a 1 minute 22. I've been as low as a 121 and as high as a 124. I'd imagine on a summer tyre, I'd probably be about a 1224. So I'm not even going to try putting a summer tyre around here, but as a winter tyre goes, this Nokian Snowproof is performing reasonably well on ice. So shockingly, it turns out the guys at Nokian who invented winter tyres know a little bit more about winter tyres and compounding than I do. This Nordic Nokian Hakapalita R3 is incredible. I still know I'm driving on ice, especially in the low speed stuff, you still have to be careful, but the grip difference compared to the European winter tyre is astounding. The car turns a little bit more, it brakes a little bit more, and it's just a little bit more balanced, and it's a really drivable package where the other car wasn't. Where the Euro Central European winter tyre was doing a mid 125 lap i've been as quick as a 111 the difference the compound has made to this ice circuit is incredible like it's the same tread pattern they're both soaked tires and this is pretty much just compound and all of a sudden i have grip where there wasn't grip so next tire i'm going to see what the hakapalita 9 is which is their studded winter tire so a similar compound to this with bits of metal jabbing down into the ice so hopefully well You'd think if this is so much better at just compound, putting actual metal into the tire that sticks into the ice would be vastly better. So either way, I'm sure I'm gonna have fun. Let's go see what a studded tire can do. <laughs> studs, studs are incredible. This car, I kind of feel like a rally driver now. You're constantly just sliding around through choice and everything's so much more fun and grippy. And it's just a joy, like, oh, I I need to take up WRC but the time the time is a 105.6 so if you think about how incredible this is putting spikes of metal into the tire which dig into the ice has gained us about five seconds changing the compound which you can't see gained about 10 seconds so you've saved about five seconds jamming bits of metal into the tire which then dig into the ice surfaces but 10 just by changing the compound and that is incredible when you actually think about how much difference just the compound can make i'm so impressed with those nordic studless winter tires and the other benefits is they don't damage road surfaces they're not illegal in some countries some countries where they have extreme winters you're not allowed to use studded tires in like historic city centers so the technology in compound today and the difference that can make on ice alone is incredible let alone snow and everything else so just because a tyre doesn't have studs doesn't make it a bad ice tyre. Like this Nokian Hakapalita R2 who's proven it by only being five seconds slower than the Hakapalita 9, which is their king of the hill stud winter tyre. And the Nokian Snowproof, although it's an excellent Central European winter tyre, it is outclassed on this surface by the other two, but that's to be expected. That's what it's designed for. And it will be a better tyre in a dry and wet because that's the trade-off you make. But it just goes to show the difference the compound for a tyre can make is way bigger than you could imagine. It's bigger than the tread pattern and it's bigger than putting metal in the tires, which is nuts. In order to sanity check the handling data, we conducted one more test, a simple ice drag race between the European winter tire and the Nordic winter tire. No matter how many times we ran the test, the result was always the same, with the Nordic studless winter tire having a huge advantage over its more dry and wet optimized brother. So fair play to Nokian, thank you to Nokian for letting me demonstrate this because a, a few tire companies wouldn't. They don't want to show any of their products being worse in a certain area. So it's really good of Nokian to allow me to be this open and give me a frozen lake and sets of wheels and tires to effectively mess around in setting lap times, which is just a dream. So thank you very much to Nokian tires. They are class leading when it comes to winter tires. Thank you 
to everyone who's viewed it. Any questions and comments, please ask below. I'll, I'll answer everything I can the best. And of course, if you've liked this, subscribe because I don't know where this is coming out in the winter, like runner videos, but there's a lot of winter content this year and some really, really good. So I recommend staying subscribed, liking, commenting, and as always, thanks for watching.